Somebody was asking about the Gonzo uh, mids. These are the Gonzo Zen. These are probably the best ones that we've ever uh, sold. Um, really great sounding paper cone with uh, rubber surround, really big magnet. Uh, nice cast frame, good for power handling. It's fended in the back. Let me get the specs on it. So they come like this in the styrofoam. Um, four ohm. Uh, I think we can also order an eight ohm version. Uh, and then we're also gonna order the five and a quarter in four ohm. Uh, some guys use these for home audio. So, and I'm like, they're super overkill for home audio. Um, they're supposed to play down to 38 Hertz. Let me sweep that real quick. Hang on real quick. All right, as long as it's not getting blocked. So that's fine. We won't get the full TSPs, but we'll do a sweep on it. See, 44 hertz, and that's without break-in. So probably break-in, it'll be right around 38, 40 hertz. Uh, you know what? Actually, let me break it in real quick. Okay. Try this again. See if you watch it, it should be it should move. Boom, just a little bit. 38. Right on the money. So I don't think we need to do this much mass. I don't have my thing here, but basically I, I think we can depend on the the factory specs for those. Um, one of the things that uh, we learned through um, some of the talks with the, the former engineers at Orion was uh, the original purpose of the old Orion HCCA 150R, uh, the pop-top version. So what was meant to, was to use, is that 150R? Yeah, that's the four channel. It was meant to be used with uh, two, uh, was it XVR2s? DVX, it was the DVX2, uh, which was the, um, it was two 12 dB slope filters and you could cascade them for a 24 db slope if you wanted like high pass and low pass things like that you could also create a 12 db band pass on each side uh, really flexible really kind of cool and then the high current side was actually supposed to be used for tweeters and the high voltage side was supposed to be used for um subwoofers because again subwoofers really like voltage and then highs like uh current uh but the marketing guys were like that's too much for people's brains. <laughs> and, you know, the whole thing about HCCA was, you know, high current competition amplifier and all that kind of stuff. So they ended up running the uh, high current side down to half an ohm and or one ohm or whatever it's stable to for the subs. And, and you know, the subs were dual to and all that kind of stuff. But the cool idea about it was um, uh, and the idea behind all that was supposed to be uh, that you get the because um, I, th I think I got again, I can't talk to Larry Frederick now. Um, because uh, under the concept brand, they came out with a four channel high current like that. Uh, one side, one half of the amp was high voltage. The other one half of the amp was high current. Uh, and they were supposed to couple it up with uh, some really high end components where uh, two channels would be used for tweeters and the other two channels would be used for um, mids. Uh, and then I believe on the concept mids, they were actually two ohm uh, for the high current side. So you could run front rear or whatever. Anyways. The idea was uh, active crossover. So what we're gonna do is do basically, I think, do I still have the pairs? I still have some. I still have some. They're just F mods. They're generic F mods that I uh, got from China. I can get more of them if you want. Uh, let me show you the Gonzo tweeters. Let me pause this real quick. So you get the Gonzo tweeters. Again, I developed this with uh, um, Richard So also known as Rom. He was one of the guys that worked at Orion. And uh, uh, Kodak, he, he, he got a bunch of the um, NT uh, tweeter motors, also sold under the ADS series, the two series, the three series, and the HCCA tweeters. They were all the same tweeter. Just they, some of them have different housings. And um, the dome that they used, the soft dome that they used under the ADS brand and also those tweeters was, was made by Kodak. It's actually just a film. And then they would attach a voice coil to it. Well, ADST, the parent company, owed like, I think it was like 13 grand. Uh, their, their check bounced. And so Kodak was like, fuck you. We're not selling you any domes until you pay this bill. And we're like, that's not our bill. They're like, we don't fucking care. And so then we ended up going to China 
and, and uh, Rom sourced, he, well, he found the factory and he sourced a titanium version, an aluminum version, and a silk version. And I really like the silk version. And uh, uh, Rom couldn't sell. He just, he, he, there's a bit, little bit of a language barrier. Uh, I think it's from Laos or Cambodia. And uh, we ended up selling those as the Gonzo tweeters. And with the uh, Orion HTCA Millennium series stuff. Let's see if I have any cups left. Here's the Gonzo stuff. So. That's what we did. We did polished aluminum. They're really fucking cool. We did a flush mount. This is the surface mount. Uh, these are spare ones. This is what the, the tweeters look like. Um, and then uh, it was the same company that was making for, I want to say VST, uh, but it was for a German company. Um, it just, this, this uses a silk dome instead of the uh, aluminum dome. They were, oh, that's right. They were using it. They, he, he, know, he knew about that source because that's what Diamond was using on the original Kevlar mids that said made in Germany and they, they, whatever they were assembled in Germany or the box was made in Germany or whatever it was. But he, he knew where they sourced them at and that's where we got them, got them from. So these are the Gonzo tweeters. I don't think I've ever done a video for you guys. I sell these all the time to lots of dealers who repackage them because they're not branded again. 15, almost 20 years ago, I had this idea about doing that. The only thing that badges them right there is that website and I think I think I just reactivated this one. It wasn't like dead or anything. It just wasn't pointed anywhere. So, uh, but that was the whole thing about Robot Underground and just Worldwide Revolution. And these come with, uh, we, we decided on this batch, this is the, the G2 version, the second version that doesn't use the um, aluminum uh, things. Just people, it cost us more and, and nobody cared. So we were like, fuck it, we'll just go black ABS. And um, God, it's bugging me now. I want to say VST because it was also, it was the same tweeter used by Diamond Audio in their um, motorsport uh, setups. But again, they were using the aluminum version, which has a higher FS of around, I think, 1300 or 1500. And uh, just people liked it better because it was brighter. Uh, but you had to cross it up at like 5K or 6K, which is typical for these. I wanted something that could work with the Orion HCCA crossovers and the ADS crossovers, which had a lower uh, crossover point right around 2.3, 2.6. And so then you needed an FS of around 1300 or um, even lower. And I think this one is still at, I want to say either 950 or 1150. It's quite low, especially for a tweeter this thin. And so this was what we thought would be a good replacement for the uh, Orion ADS tweeter uh, NT series. Same thing, because those had a low FS as well, right around 1000 hertz. So for a tweeter, that's, that's, that's quite low. And, um, oh yeah, so the F mods have a, a 12 dB slope uh, and you can plug it into any RCA input, including the Gonzo amp over there. Um, and, and just that, that way you do it electronic. It's the same idea that uh, Rockford had with the X cards. And then you may have seen also a different version under old audio control where they use the SIP uh, banks, SIP. And you also saw it in the uh, PPI Sedona series so that's that's all that what the f mod is it's basically a rockford fazio x card where there's a resistor and a cap in um uh in a little you know configuration for a 12 db slope and we have those crossover points at 2500 which is the ultimate uh, uh audio file version and then uh we have a step up at 3500 which was meant for the aluminum ones but you can use them uh on these if you want to push them a little harder uh, typically we rate these at about uh, 60 watts and then with the steeper slope you can go more power and I think we also had some passive crossovers if we if you wanted but uh, in fact I think I found them the other day Let's see what they are uh, Rockford Fosgate 12 dB at 400 I don't think so I don't think that's 400 Hertz I think this is the high one I'll have to check that 47 microfarad and then I have to figure out what that inductor is but again we got these left over from Rock for Fosgate, MX 128. Yeah, so it's probably 8 ohm, 12 dB. And I think these are at 5K, if I remember right. But um, 8 ohm at 5K is not very popular for car audio, which is probably why they were left over. Um, oh, and then we also have passive crossovers. This is the original Hard Times crossover, which uses air core copper inductors, and then it just uses a simple cap. And then it also had tweeter options. I don't have very many of these left, and so what we've been doing is using either um, the recoil crossovers, uh, which I think are th at 3,500, uh, or some other crossovers that I have. Again, all the crossovers are the same. 
I don't really recommend passives. Uh, oh, that's right. Here, look at this. I got a whole bunch of, this is an old board from uh, ADS that they use to figure out, um, you know, like, what do they call it? A breadboard. So you can test it. So this is the, uh, let's not model electronics. What do I got in here? Oh, I got crossovers. Oh, yeah, I got some of these too. These are nice. These are the old cobalt ones. These were actually, I don't know if they were made here, but they were made in Tempe. Uh, that's the original part number. This is the coax. Uh, Cobalt uh, 93, 693, and then we had some of the 6CS crossovers. These are pretty simple. They just have a little um, um, tweeter protection in them. Where's the? I gotta go through my shit again. I got, dude. I got so many passive crossovers. Like this whole box is just passive fucking crossovers. But I don't, I don't use them anymore. So I don't sell them. Here's the old 236IM, 236CS. All those, some diamond stuff. I thought I had a bunch of stuff over here. Oh, I gave those to Tyler. Uh, I was gonna show you this, uh, the SIP chips. Um, I got a whole box of those that were, they were SIP chips for, you could use them on Sedona amps. You could also use them on audio control. Audio control used the square ones. Uh, they were just integrated. It was like an integrated circuit uh, where they actually make it. Um, yeah, I think I gave those to Tyler because he has, he was all into audio control and shit. Uh, but anyways, it's just a, it's just a, it's a line level passive crossover, which for some reason, if you put it on the, uh, RCA side, it's called active. That's all just because it dedicates that channel to whatever pass band that you want to dedicate it to. That's all typically, um, let's see if I have some back here. Typically you have a plus or minus 15 volt power supply, which if those that are old enough to remember, uh, which is uh, phantom power. So, but you look at anything like this, here's my good buddy. I love this little fucker, XR1. Trying not to get uh, two. I, I still want to listen to this. I've never listened to this. I want to see how it works. Uh, but this is like a basic crossover. So it's, all this does is it has power here up at the top right, and then it adds uh, plus or minus um, 15 volts, and then you can do everything you want. So same with all these. These are all for sale, by the way. These are only 40 bucks each shipped. Uh, the COE8, uh, COA6, uh, this eight channel, eight channel. I got a bunch of six channels. Where'd those go? Uh, I don't know, maybe that's all that's left. I wanted to show if they had the CEX, uh, which was the, oh yeah, here's, here's a good version of it. So ADS. So again, this is, again, this is not, new technology this is old 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 um i just like the fact that um what's his name at harrison labs <coughs> dead moth included ew go and um that harrison labs guys he's he's the one that he um trademarked the term f mod and um as in frequency module and uh but the, the, what, what you're doing with it is really not that um, difficult. Again, Rockford did it with the X cards back in the 90s with the DSM. Uh, they did it all the way up to 1999 and a half from 94. Yeah, 94 to 99 and a half. This is ADS's version. Uh, this one's great. I, I really like it. I didn't mean to collect it, but I still have it left over. If somebody wants to buy it, I'll give it to you for 60 bucks shipped. Uh, the cool thing about it, though, was it usually came with a manual, and then um, you could program it for whatever you wanted. See? And here's a little menu, and it tells you what to do. I think Rockford Fosgate had the same thing. Probably, like, one of the former engineers from Rockford went across town and worked at uh, ADST and did the same thing for them. And did it under the ADS brand, so... Uh, again, it's the same thing. You can also do it with just resistors, which is what a SIP pack, SIP. Um, uh, that's what a SIP pack is. And then, like I said, there's a couple different versions of the SIPs. Uh, again, the Sedona version, which used a single-ended, and then uh, there was the other double one like this that Audio Control used. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and it fit in there like a chip. Uh, and then you just put the resistors across for, and you put certain values to get certain frequencies and certain slopes and all that kind of stuff. The uh, AutoWorks 2000, is it Auto, AutoSound 2000? 
the guys at or or Orange County uh, Soundworks, um, they like to fuck around with the um, X cards because you could get in there and solder different values and things like that. And then they actually did a modification that helped. I think it was, I, I would love to know what Eric did. It was Eric Holder. Um, uh, somebody asked Eric what he, what they, what they did whenever they would do an aperiodic um, membrane enclosure. I think they just put a, a high pass filter, like it was infrasonic filter because at the time Rockford amps didn't have infrasonic. And all the, by the way, you can just solder directly to those X card boards and use them just like an F mod. So just so you know, uh, there was some kid I, uh, this was a while back, I sold him a whole bunch of those X cards. So I wanted him to, I, again, I want to get rid of all this old stuff. I don't really care about it. Um, but if you want to make it your own and you want to do, be the dealer and get your start, go for it. I got tons of stuff, tons of stuff for sale. But um, that's the Gonzo component sets, the new Gonzo Zen mids. Uh, let me go back to those. Uh, we're doing these, let's see. Uh, until I get the big shipment in, we're going to do them. Uh, I was doing them at 350, but we'll do them at 250 shipped. And so you get two six and a halfs, four ohm. You get two of the Gonzo tweeters, four ohm. You get your choice of either passive or active crossovers. Um, and then I think we're also going to do the. Uh, no, I'll save those for the. I'll save those for the retail guys. So we had some. Uh, you would get the cups, which we do the. Uh, I like the American International ones, these guys. So if you're going to do enclosures. And then what we do is use a piece of uh, Dynamat. Uh, and then you put it on the back so it doesn't rattle. And uh, so we would do those. If you want to do the um, the recoil ones, which are just like a rubber boot. And it has some egg crepe foam that goes in the back. Again, we'll, do, we'll save that for retail. But if you want those things, just add like another, I don't know, $30, $40, something like that. But... Um, Gonzo Zen, six and a half inch pair, uh, three year warranty. <sighs> yeah, 250 shipped. So we'll do that for now. And then when I get the big pallet shipment in with all the other samples and stuff like that, then we're gonna sell them retail uh, on for Blackjack Audio. And then also under the Gonzo brand, but they'll be price comparative, uh, probably 350 a set. And which again is still super cheap compared to Focal. Focal charges, and these are on par with anything that Focal can dish out. It's really not that hard to do once you know how to do it. Um, uh, even their, including their, what is it, Unobtainium? What are the, what's the stupid name of their, whatever, the ones that cost like $1,200 or $2,400 or whatever they are. It's not that, it's not that great. Uh, it's, it's, it's easy to produce. It's easy to, it's easy to reproduce. In fact, these are probably be better, uh, better sounding. Um, but yeah, uh, mids, tweeters, crossovers, um, and I'll throw in some connectors and wire and things like that. Uh, no charge, but, uh, that's 250 a pair shipped for a set, for a full set. Um, mids on their own. Mm. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do, we'll, mm. yeah, if you want to buy them on their own, we'll do 180 a pair on the mids. And then these I've been selling for 80 a pair on their own. So we can do those as well. And then with these, I just include like a pair of caps, like 2.2 or 3.3 microfarad, and they're, they're fine. Uh, um, and then if you want crossovers on top of that, that you know. I got to remember to charge you guys for stuff. I've been giving away free stuff for so long. Uh, oh, I didn't finish my thought from earlier, which was the um, Gonzo Jr. motors that are coming in. Uh, we will be retailing those through Blackjack Audio for $700 each for the 12 and we're going to put it up against the JL audio 12 W seven because it's better. And, uh, it's, uh, more awesomer and we can customize it. And it's still half the price of the JL audio 12 W seven AE or whatever. And, um, and then we're, we're actually going to charge just under PSI prices for any modifications, uh, including frame color, spider packs, things like that. Uh, so they will still be, the top assemblies will be handmade here, uh, but the motors are all done and ready to go. But we will not be selling the motors on their own. Uh, you have to buy um, uh, the whole shebang, motor and top assembly. It doesn't matter which size top assembly, 10, 12, 15, or 18, uh, but you gotta buy it complete. Uh, I still will be doing wholesale 
for blackjack audio dealers uh again twenty one hundred dollar buy-in um we're not going to do territories i that, that was a mistake and uh not until we get bigger where we do like a you do you do a twenty one thousand dollar buy-in or something like that um I, which if it sounds rich for your blood uh try sundown sundown wants a hundred thousand dollar commitment per year uh which is pretty easy to rack up especially when they're you're not getting any points on it we want you to still get your full uh 50 points 100 points however however you uh calculate it basically to double your money and then if you actually resell it under your own brand and 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 get into the laser scribing things like that then you can get into some really good money and i actually need the money i need uh even if we sell at 700 dollars each uh that's only 70 grand and uh that might wipe out my credit card bills that's it which is fine because then uh i will uh i'll have almost a million dollars in assets and uh or control a million dollars in assets it's not mine but uh control a million dollars in assets and then uh have like no debt and so that'll look really good and they're like oh they get a banker boner and they're like we want to shoot loads on you because you're good with money i'm like yeah that's right i'm good with money and so then they uh give me um two hundred fifty thousand dollar line of credit or even half a million and we'll go from there i'm kind of dreaming on that half a million i think i can i, can, I think i can still pull down a quarter mil in line of credit so uh, cause I have enough assets and it, that's only like a 20% valuation or 25% valuation. It's fine. It's fine. I have enough assets. I've worked really, really hard. I need to get the fuck out of here. Um, I think that was it. Oh, I have one more combo left. I wanted to give you, I got, uh, I think we're out of the five K's. I do have one, two, three, four, five of the eight K's left. I think, oh no, I got that one sold. So we only have four and then I have one of the 600.4s. I will still do that deal. It was 600 bucks shipped for the pair. So you get one 8K, you get one 600.4, again, which is 2,400 watts. Uh, each uh, amp is one ohm stable. I got two of the 3Ks left and two of the two channels left, uh, which is the 3K.2, it's just a two channel. Well, you can also sell this as the two ohm optimized uh, 3K. And then I still, this is the last of the Jizlama amps, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 so about 14 of those left we're going to do those bottom low price for 250 shipped um and those do 1600 watts and uh i'm not going to do any more of the silver ones the only ones i'm going to do after that are going to be the black ones and they're going to be looking a lot like uh a more mainstream brand that has a j in it and an l in it and it uses shit like that so but uh again it'll be over 10% different. So again, it's a parody brand, so it doesn't really matter. Making fun of JL Audio, how expensive they are. Uh, I didn't have time to pack this today, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat and then stay out here. The wife wants wife time and I'm like, come on, babe, get off my dick. I got my rubber vagina that I'm fucking now. You gotta get in line. And so I'll come out here and pack these orders and get all this shit out of here. Uh, I think that was it. All right. I love you guys. That's the, that's the Gonzo setup. Uh, text me direct 602-312-6504 with your name and your shipping address. I'll add you to the phone and then we can go from there. Talk to you later.